NCLEX, RN practice exam number 10. Question 1. The client is having an arteriogram. During the procedure, the client tells the nurse, I'm feeling really hot. Which response would be best? A. You are having an allergic reaction. I will get an order for Benadryl. B. That feeling of warmth is normal when the dye is injected. C. That feeling of warmth indicates that the clots in the coronary vessels are dissolving. D. I will tell your doctor and let him explain to you the reason for the hot feeling that you are experiencing. Answer B. It is normal for the client to have a warm sensation when dye is injected. Answers A, C, and D indicate that the nurse believes that the hot feeling is abnormal, so they are incorrect. Question 2. The nurse is observing several healthcare workers providing care. Which action by the healthcare worker indicates a need for further teaching? A. The nursing assistant wears gloves while giving the client a bath. B. The nurse wears goggles while drawing blood from the client. C. The doctor washes his hands before examining the client. D. The nurse wears gloves to take the client's vital signs. Answer D. It is not necessary to wear gloves to take the vital signs of the client. If the client has active infection with methicillin resistance to Aphylococcus aureus, gloves should be worn. The healthcare workers in answers A, B, and C indicate knowledge of infection control by their actions. Question 3. The client is having electroconvulsive therapy for treatment of severe depression. Which of the following indicates that the client's ECT has been effective? A. The client loses consciousness. B. The client vomits. C. The client's ECG indicates tachycardia. D. The client has a grand mal seizure. Answer D. During ECT, the client will have a grand mal seizure. This indicates completion of the electroconvulsive therapy. Answers A, B, and C do not indicate that the ECT has been effective, so are incorrect. Answer D. It is not necessary to w Question 3. The client is having electroconvulsive therapy for treatment of severe depression. Which of the following indicates that the client's ECT has been effective? A. The client loses consciousness. B. The client vomits. C. The client's ECG indicates tachycardia. D. The client has a grand mal seizure. Answer D. During ECT, the client will have a grand mal seize. This indicates completion of the electroconvulsive therapy. Answers A, B, and C do not indicate that the ECT has been effective, so are incorrect.
Answer D. It is not necessary to wear gloves to take the vital signs of the client. If the client has active infection with methicillin resistance to Aphylococcus aureus, gloves should be worn. The healthcare workers in answers A, B, and C indicate knowledge of infection control by their actions. Answer A. The pregnant nurse should not be assigned to any client with radioactivity present. The client receiving linear accelerator therapy travels to the radium department for therapy. The radiation stays in the department, so the client is not radioactive. The clients in answers B, C, and D pose a risk to the pregnant nurse. These clients are radioactive in very small doses, especially upon returning from the procedures. For approximately 72 hours, the clients should dispose of urine and feces in special containers and use plastic spoons and forks. Answer D. During ECT, the client. Answer A. The client with Cushing's disease has adrenocortical hypersecretion. This increase in the level of cortisone causes the client to be immune suppressed. In answer B, the client with diabetes poses no risk to other clients. The client in answer C has an increase in growth hormone and poses no risk to himself or others. The client in answer D has hypothyroidism or myxedema and poses no risk to others or himself. Answer D. The nurse could be charged with malpractice, which is failing to perform, or performing an act that causes harm to the client. Giving the infant an overdose falls into this category. Answers A, B, and C are incorrect because they apply to other wrongful acts. Negligence is failing to perform care for the client, a tort is a wrongful act committed on the client or their belongings and assault is a violent physical or verbal attack. Answer D. During ECT, the client will have a grand mal seize. This indicates completion of the electroconvulsive therapy. Answers A, B, and C do not indicate that the ECT has been effective, so are incorrect. Answer D. It is not necessary to wear gloves to take the vital signs of the client. If the client has active infection with methicillin resistance to Aphylococcus aureus, gloves should be worn. The healthcare workers in answers A, B, 
and C. Indicate knowledge of infection control by their actions. Question 12. Which information should be reported to the State Board of Nursing? A. The facility fails to provide literature in both Spanish and English. B. The narcotic count has been incorrect on the unit for the past three days. C. The client fails to receive an itemized account of his bills and services received during his hospital stay. D. The nursing assistant assigned to the client with hepatitis fails to feed the client and give the bath. Answer D. It is not necessary to work. Answer D. The nurse could be charged with malpractice, which is failing to perform, or performing an act that causes harm to the client. Giving the infant an overdose falls into this category. Answers A, B, and C are incorrect because they apply to other wrongful acts. Negligence is failing to perform care for the client, a tort is a wrongful act committed on the client or the Question 12. Which information should be reported to the State Board of Nursing? A. The facility fails to provide literature in both Spanish and English. B. The narcotic count has been incorrect on the unit for the past three days. C. The client fails to receive an itemized account of his bills and services received during his hospital stay. D. The nursing assistant assigned to the client with hepatitis fails to feed the client and give the bath. Answer D. It is not necessary to wear gloves to take the vital signs of the client. If the client has active infection with methicillin resistance to Aphylococcus aureus, gloves should be worn. The healthcare workers in answers A, B, and C indicate knowledge of infection control by their actions. Answer A. The client with Cushing's disease has adrenocortical hypersecretion. This increase in the level of cortisone causes the client to be immune suppressed. In answer B, the client with diabetes poses no risk to other clients. The client in answer C has an increase in growth hormone and poses no risk to himself or others. The client in answer D has hypothyroidism or myxedema and poses no risk to others or himself. Question 15. The emergency room is flooded with clients injured in a tornado. Which clients can be assigned to share a room in the emergency department during the disaster? A. A schizophrenic client having visual and auditory hallucinations and the client with ulcerative colitis. B. The client who is six months pregnant with abdominal pain and the client with facial lacerations and a broken arm. C. A child whose pupils are fixed and dilated and his parents, and a client with a frontal head injury. D. The client who arrives with a large puncture wound to the abdomen and the client with chest pain. Answer A. 
the pregnant nurse should not be answer b the pregnant client and the client with a broken arm and facial lacerations are the best choices for placing in the same room the clients in answers a c and d need to be placed in separate rooms due to the serious natures of their injuries answer d it is not necessary to wear gloves to take the vital signs of the client if the client has active infection with methicillin resistance to Aphylococcus aureus, gloves should be worn. The healthcare workers in answers A, B, and C indicate knowledge of infection control by their actions. Question 15. The emergency room is flooded with clients injured in a tornado. Which clients can be assigned to share a room in the emergency department during the disaster? A. A schizophrenic client having visual and auditory hallucinations and the client with ulcerative colitis. B. The client who is six months pregnant with abdominal pain and the client with facial lacerations and a broken arm. C. A child whose pupil answer A. The pregnant nurse should not be assigned to any client with radioactivity present. The client receiving linear accelerator therapy travels to the radium department for therapy. The radiation stays in the department, so the client is not radioactive. The clients in answers B, C and depose a risk to the pregnant nurse. These clients are radioactive in very small doses, especially upon returning from the procedures. For approximately 72 hours, the clients should dispose of urine and feces. Answer C. Remember the ABC's airway, breathing, circulation when answering this question. Answer C is correct because a hot dog is the size and shape of the child's trachea and poses a risk of aspiration. Answers A, B, and C are incorrect because white grape juice, a grilled cheese sandwich, and ice cream do not pose a risk of aspiration for a child. Answer D. It is not necessary to work. Answer C. The nurse should encourage rooming in to promote parent-child attachment. It is okay for the parents to be in the room for assessment of the child. Allowing the child to have items that are familiar to him is allowed and encouraged. Therefore, answers A and B are incorrect. Answer D is not part of the nurse's responsibilities. Question 19. Which instruction should be given to the client who is fitted for a behind-the-ear hearing aid? A. Remove the mold and clean every week. B. Store the hearing aid in a warm place. C. Clean the lint from the hearing aid with a toothpick. D. Change the batteries weekly. Answer C. Remember the ABCs. Answer A. The client with Cushing's disease has adrenocortical hypersecretion. This increase in the level of cortisone causes the client to be immune suppressed. In answer B, the client with diabetes poses no risk to other clients. The client in answer C has an increase in growth hormone and poses no risk to himself or others. The client in answer, answer D during ECT, the client will have a grand mal -seas. This indicates completion of the electroconvulsive therapy. Answers A, B, and C do not indicate that the ECT has been effective, so are incorrect. Answer D. The nurse could be charged with...
Question 15. The emergency room is flooded with clients injured in a tornado. Which clients can be assigned to share a room in the emergency department during the disaster? A. A schizophrenic client having visual and auditory hallucinations and the client with ulcerative colitis. B. The client who is six months pregnant with Answer C. Remember the ABCs. Question 19. Which instruction should be given to the client who is fitted for a behind-the-ear hearing aid? A. Remove the mold and clean every week. B. Store the hearing aid in a warm place. C. Clean the lint from the hearing aid with a toothpick. D. Change the batteries weekly. Question 22. The nurse is caring for a client admitted with epiglottis. Because of the possibility of complete obstruction of the airway, which of the following should the nurse have available? A. Intravenous access supplies. B. A tracheostomy set. C. Intravenous fluid administration pump. D. Supplemental oxygen. <laughs> Question 23. A 25-year-old client with Graves' disease is admitted to the unit. What would the nurse expect the admitting assessment to reveal? A. Bradycardia. B. Decreased appetite. C. Exothermos. D. Weight gain. Question 12. Which information should be... Answer D. The nurse could be charged with malpractice, which is failing to perform, or performing an act that causes harm to the client. Giving the infant an overdose falls into this category. Answers A, B, and C are... Answer D. 
the nurse could be charged with. Question 22. The nurse is caring for a client admitted with epiglottis. Because of the possibility of complete obstruction of the airway, which of the following should the nurse have available? A. Intravenous access supplies. B. A tracheostomy set. C. Intravenous fluid administration pump. D. Supplemental oxygen. Question 19. Which instruction should... Answer C. The nurse should encourage rooming in to promote parent-child attachment. It is okay for the parents to be in the room for assessment of the child. Allowing the child to have items that are familiar to him is allowed and encouraged. Therefore, answers A and B are incorrect. Answer D is not part of the nurse's responsibilities. Answer D. The nurse could be charged with malpractice, which is failing to perform, or performing an act that causes harm to the client. Giving the infant an overdose falls into this category. Answers A, B, and C are incorrect because they apply to other wrongful acts. Negligence is failing to perform care for the client, a tort is a wrongful act committed on the client or their belongings, and assault is a violent physical or verbal attack. Question 22. The nurse is ca- Answer C. Remember the ABC's airway, breathing, circulation when answering this question. Answer C is correct because a hot dog is the size and shape of the child's trachea and poses a risk of aspiration. Answers A, B, and C are incorrect because white grape juice, a grilled cheese sandwich, and ice cream do not pose a risk of aspiration. Answer D. It is not necessary to wear gloves to take the vital signs of the client. If the client has active infection with methicillin resistance to Aphylococcus aureus, gloves should be worn. The healthcare workers in answers A, B, and C indicate knowledge of infection control by their actions. Answer A. The client with Cushing's disease. Answers A, C, E, and F. After eye surgery, some scratchiness and mild eye discomfort may occur in the operative eye and is usually relieved by mild analgesics. If the eye pain becomes severe, the client should notify the surgeon because this may indicate hemorrhage, infection, or increased intraocular pressure. The nurse would also instruct the client to notify the surgeon of purulent drainage, increased redness, or any decrease in visual acuity. The client is instructed to place an eye shield over the operative eye at bedtime to protect the eye from injury during sleep and to avoid activities that increase intraocular pressure such as bending over. Question 30. A nurse is providing a list of instructions to a client who is scheduled to have an electroencephalogram EEG. Choose the instructions that the nurse places on the list. Select all that apply. A. Cola is acceptable to drink on the day of the test. B. Tea and coffee are restricted on the day of the test. C. The test will take between 45 minutes and 2 hours. D. The hair should be washed the evening before the test. E. All medications need to be withheld on the day of the test. F. A nothing by mouth and PO status is required on the day of the test.
Answer D. It is not necessary to wear gloves to take the vital signs of the client. If the client has active infection with methicillin resistance to Aphylococcus aureus, gloves should be worn. The healthcare workers in answers A, B, and C indicate knowledge of infection control by their actions. Question 22. The nurse is caring for a client admitted with epiglottis.